this is how we show our love. It just didn't seem that strange. We were meant to be together. You know, and this is us showing each other that we love each other. This is how we show our love. So, Berto, did you see the new Michael Jackson documentary, Leaving Neverland? Have you seen it? I did. Oh, my God, I did. So, do you want to talk about it? I almost don't, but I think it's probably for the best if we do. Part of it, I was watching it at a bar, and they must have thought I had some sort of neurological thing where my head doesn't stop moving, because I was just, no, 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 the whole time. It just didn't seem that strange. First, your reaction to leaving Neverland. You are there to testify for him under oath. And then when he dies, you decide that that's a good time to come that, that come out. Uh, Wade, I'm very disappointed in. Like, I'm, I'm, I might be a pop singer, but I'm also from the fucking South. And you fucking come at me on some sour shit. You're lucky I got something to lose now. Like, because I would punch you in your face. Telling graphic, sexually explicit stories may be psychologically effective, but it is not evidence that the stories are true. Adult men are perfectly capable of making up such stories. Moreover, to many who have studied the Jackson case for many years, even decades, the stories Robson and Safechuck tell sound eerily familiar, especially Safechuck's allegations, which are by far the most salacious and bizarre. Leave in Neverland, James's eye access cues are dominated by movements to his upper right. Unless he is one of those rare people who has his brain hardwired the other way around in terms of eye accessing, then this suggests that he's making up a lot of his story. When he's down there and this is how we show our love. talk about grooming, this process where the perpetrator manipulates the entire family. Now, when you watch Leaving Neverland or you explore the background of abusers, what we notice is that most people tend to fixate only on the sexual act, whereas grooming helps us explore all the different dimensions it requires for someone to not only abuse a child, but to be a serial Everyone agreed, the parents, yeah. the kids, the Michael himself. And the helpers. and yeah. They would say, yeah, Michael would sleep in his big bed. But it's, it's nothing wrong. They would always wear PJs. That's ignorant. Yeah. And so uh, no one can tell when other people are lying. I'm just going to tell you that. Sure. There's no special skill. There's no one on this planet that is particularly good at it. There's uh, there's no lie detector test that, mm -hmm. that is effective. Right. There's just no way to know. And the way these guys talk, it's I am 99.9% .9 sure they're telling the truth. I think when I was with him, he was happy. Okay. He was at the peak of his creativity. And he was at the peak of his success. And everybody wanted to meet Michael or be with Michael. He was already larger than life. And then he likes you. So the issue here is what happened behind closed doors. No, no one disputes the fact that he slept with little boys. Yeah. Again and again agree, and again. Yeah. He spent yeah. all these nights in yeah. bed. And that, that in itself is, is very weird. weird. Yeah. Right. And if, makes me as a father feel very uncomfortable. Yeah. So if this so was I, the guy down, down the road, if this was, you know, your next door neighbor who was constantly spending the night with little boys, mm. Yeah. And uh, what, what would you think? No, I think it'd be very weird. So uh, is, is it just because of Michael's talent as a performer that we allow him to get away? Well, he... 
I don't accept any of the premises that the rest of the media does, and especially here in America. In America, post Me Too, the American media is completely cowed and terrified of even remotely questioning an alleged victim of any sort of sexual abuse. They are presumed now to be telling the truth regardless how of how inconsistent, how absurd, how contradicted their story is. And that, to me, is very dangerous. Right now, if you are accused of this type of thing, you are almost judge guilty before you can defend yourself. I think right now we're going a little too far, and a lot of people who are not honest, who are trying to capitalize on this particular movement, are raising accusations that need to be challenged. I think the freedom of the Me Too movement has allowed false accusations to be made. I liked the feeling that was making him happy, that was pleasing him, you know. I'll never forget the the um, the feeling of his hair. That was rough, almost like a um, like a Brillo pad. Like this roughness and he's down there and this is how we show our love we were meant to be together you know, and this is us showing each other that we love each other. And that's really the clash that I had with this documentary, is I tend to believe victims, and I also believe in our legal system, and this may be one of those really unsettling um, examples of where our justice system kind of really failed. So did you believe these two guys? I do. So I want to apologize because in that last deep dive, my conclusion was 60-40. I was mm -hmm. like, I'm 60% sure that he did it and 40% that he didn't right. based on the evidence. Um, I want to apologize for not believing the victims. I should have, I should have believed the victims. You'd have to be so evil, so evil, to do this to a dead man that was, let's say, what everyone else is saying, how great he was to children, how wonderful he was to the children. You'd have to be so evil, so vindictive, for just money? Yeah. To do, because... This you, does you nothing for their career. No, it, it, it hurts them yes. very much so. so. So you have a very famous person who was perceived as weird and who's dead. That's a great target, and that's why the media uh, has embraced, along with the Oprah Winfrey angle, why they've embraced leaving Neverland to a large degree. Moreover, his career crumbled way before he realized that he had allegedly been sexually abused. This means the whole premise of his lawsuit about his breakdowns being a result of sexual abuse is nothing but a lie. And it was a very convenient lie, too. Absolutely. So one of them is a successful uh industry person he's as you said was the coach for in sync for uh britney he has a reputation he's known he's made plenty of money and then he had this breakdown where he had to walk away from it so is the motivation well now he needs money so what can he do okay well then he should actually also start acting in movies because oh my god right and then the other guy even better like give him two oscars because it's like you don't see a movie with the best actors we know that is that well acted. <laughs> right. I called up Dan Reed, I didn't know Dan Reed, and told him, that, Dan, I said, you were able to illustrate 
in these four hours what I tried to explain in 217. And I know people all over the world are going to be in an uproar and debating whether or not Michael Jackson did these things or not, whether these two men are lying or not lying. But for me, this moment transcends Michael Jackson. It's inherently absurd to think that these guys could, four years after Michael Jackson's death in a lawsuit, contradict everything that they had ever said, everything that they'd ever done, including under oath. If you're really that sure of yourself, Dan Reed, then why did you need to be so one-sided? Why did you need four hours of drone shots and dramatic music? So what do we learn from leaving Neverland and really this whole story with Michael Jackson? Well, one of the first things we learn here is it's important to tell the truth. And this is, I guess, really specifically related to like Wade Robson and James Safechuck. You have to tell the truth if you want to be believed throughout your life, if you want to have credibility. It takes a lifetime to build up a reputation and credibility and only a split second to have it all go away. One possibility is that he is a monster and all the other things that made him look altruistic and good were there for ulterior motives and were, were, were not really pure. The second possibility is that these allegations aren't true and he is as he has appeared in the public eye. And the third possibility is that both things can be true. That he can be a person who's done some horrible things and has really hurt a lot of people and also had a side of him that wanted to do good, wanted to show love, wanted to be altruistic. Another thing we learn is, in terms of Michael Jackson, don't even give the appearance of wrongdoing. And unfortunately for Michael Jackson, he did give that appearance through his behavior. We can also learn a little bit about the power of celebrity status, whether Michael Jackson was guilty or not guilty. We see that the mothers of Wade and James really appeared to demonstrate